And this is an example of where we want to calculate what the random variable is. So we're going to be flipping a weighted coin. So heads has a probability of landing 60% of the time. And we're asked to find the probability that it will come up heads exactly five times out of 10 flips. So we want to find the probability that the random variable is equal to five. And if we use our formula, that was 10 choose five, the probability of success, which is 0.6 to the fifth, times the probability of failure, which is 0 0.4, 10 minus five. All right, so that's the general setup here. We have to recall what this combination is. And that was 10 factorial over five factorial times 10 minus five factorial. And then we have 0 0.6 to the fifth and 0.4 to the, if you did 10 minus five, you get fifth power again. And so either you can throw this into your calculator to get a number. Um, we could also play around with these factorials to make it a little bit simpler to deal with. We're first going to do the uh, parentheses. And then we're going to expand out the 10 factorial till we get to a five factorial because that's the largest factorial in the denominator. And we have five times four times three times two times one. All right, so this is a five factorial. That's a five factorial. It's 0.6 to the fifth, 0.4 to the fifth. And if we cancel those out, then we just start to look and see what else we can cancel out. So if I see two and five gives us 10, three goes into nine, leaving us with a three on top and four goes into eight, which gives us a two on top. So altogether, this is the same thing as three times two times seven times six times 0.6 to the fifth power times 0.4 to the fifth power. Right. And at this point, throw it into a calculator and you end up getting this thing is roughly 0 0.2007. All right, so if you had a weighted coin, the probability that you come up with exactly five heads out of 10 flips is roughly about 20%. All right, and since these binomial distributions if we were to do that for each one of the random variable, is an example of a discrete random variable or discrete probability distribution. We can talk about its mean, variance, and standard deviation. But since this is a very, very special type of probability distribution, there's very nice formulas for the mean. And so the mean is just going to be the number of trials times the probability of success. The variance is going to be the number of trials times the probability of success times the probability of failure. And then the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Right. You could use the other definitions that we had in 4.1 to get the mean variance and standard deviation. But since these are very nice probability distributions, we have very nice formulas for their mean variance and standard deviation. So let's look at this example here. When randomly guessing on a multiple choice test with eight questions, where each question has four options, what is the probability that you will get at least seven questions correct? We have to first figure out if this is a binomial distribution. So is there a fixed number of trials? Well, there's only eight questions. And so yes, there's going to only be eight. What's the probability that just randomly guessing A, B, C, or D that you get an answer correct? Well, it's gonna be 0.25. If you get question one correct, that will not impact if you get question two correct. 
Um, and the probability of getting the second question correct is the same as getting the probability, or the same probability as getting the first one correct. And so they're going to be independent. Our Q, the probability of not getting it correct is 0.75. And our random variable is just gonna keep track of how many questions we get correct. All right, so we're gonna have X equals zero questions correct, one question correct, two all the way up to eight. Right, and so this is an example of a binomial distribution. And we're asked that we get at least seven correct. So we want the probability that X is greater than or equal to seven. That's just the notation for we get at least seven questions correct. Right, and since we only have eight trials, that means we either have seven questions or eight questions correct. And if these two things are thought of as different events, by getting seven questions correct, that means that you did not get eight questions correct. And if you get exactly eight questions correct, that means that you didn't get exactly seven questions correct. So these two are mutually exclusive events. And if you think about what our probabilities do with an or, is they break up really, really nicely. So this is the probability of getting exactly seven plus the probability of getting exactly eight correct. And since this is a binomial distribution, we know what P of seven is, and we know what P of eight is. So our P of seven, we had eight trials, and we want to choose seven of those successes, 0.25 to the seventh, and then 0.75 to the first power, right? Because eight minus seven gives us one. Then we have plus eight, choose eight, 0.25 to the eighth power times 0.75 to the zeroth power. And now we can throw that into our calculator, if you'd like. And we end up getting that this is roughly 0 0.0003815. So if you just walk right into this test, not studying at all and just guessing at whatever answers you think, you just fill in the, the bubble sheet or the Scantron, um, just complete random answers. The probability of getting seven or eight of those questions correct is very, very low. It's less than 1%. Um, and so why don't we figure out what the expected value is? So if you don't study at all and you just come in and fill out A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, or whatever, um, what would be the expected score you would get on that test? And so the expected number of questions, which is your expected value, which is just another name for the mean of getting uh, the number of questions correct without studying for the exam. Well, we calculate mu. And because we have ourselves a binomial distribution, we know that the mean is equal to n times p. And so we have eight as our n our p is 0.25 and so you would be expected to get two questions correct if you just randomly started picking out answers out of those eight questions and then we want to figure out what the standard deviation is and our formula up here says that standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q and so our n again was 8, our p was 0.25, and our q was 0.75. And if you run that through a calculator, you get 1.2247.